for me, I think theater is a, still a huge resource. And, um, and I think that we can see sort of what an actor's training is and, and what they're made of. I love theater. And I, you know, like, I think as we all love movies, we want these to stay forever as a communal experience, but because of, because of the internet, because of these other avenues, there are ways for actors to showcase their work. Welcome to the SAG After Foundation's The Business Program. I'm Jazz Tanke, Senior Artisans Editor for Variety. Thank you all so much for joining us on this Tuesday afternoon on a dry LA afternoon, I have to add, if you're in LA. Now, without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce these fabulous casting directors. We have A.V. Kaufman, Gail Keller, Douglas Abel, and Nikki Barrett. Hello and welcome to you all. Um, thank you so much for joining us. And I'm just going to dive right on in. Let's start with getting the secret sauce, you know, the magic to, you know, the secret to making the magic happen. You know, one common question is how do you self tape? Like, what is the best way to self tape? To, to send in a self-tape, like lighting, background, like talk about that. Avi, do you want to kickstart the conversation? No, but I will. Um, you know, for me, because we're all, you know, different and we have, it's a new way of life, a new way of, of taping. And if we get a, a lot of tapes coming in, this sounds a little picky, but uh, you know, sometimes it's it's great when the actor just starts the process. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of times I know they want to do a full length and tell us their name and all of that, which is important and, and, and very important. Um, but, but sometimes I want to just see, see it. I just want to see what they do without music, without, uh, you know, a lot of instruments, uh, just, just, present whatever they've been working on. Somebody want to jump in? Yeah. I mean, I, I would, I would agree with that. Um, and I think one way of maybe um, doing that and at the same time, maybe doing a slate is what we call it, right. As a separate, as a separate, uh, you know, uh, link. So like, just do your work and then you could do a separate link at the end saying your name your height or, or whatever they're asking for that's important for them, where you're based is always important, you know, because of, of, of logistics and stuff like that. But I think, she, I think AB's right, you know, don't try and do too much, try and keep it simple, try and keep it honest to the script, honest to whatever material is you've gotten to the tone of it, you know, just trying to fill in with as much information about the project as you can so that it sort of feels like they're in that world of what we're looking for. But simplicity is, is um, I think, a key <laughs> to not try and muddle it too much, especially if you're just on your own, you know, I'll, to make that choice. I'll add to that. And I, I, each project needs director has different needs. So it, it varies slightly. But one thing I find, at least with a lot of my projects, because I know how much work it is for actors to have to like self-produce these things. And I always say to people, not only keep it simple, I actually prefer to see somebody like in their natural habitat reading a scene rather than like with a blue background that they've rented or going to a great expense of going to a studio for a formal audition. I think as long as it's clear and you can see well, um, I, I find sometimes it's entertaining to see someone in their backyard or in their bathroom or their living room, wherever they're comfortable um, acting well. And, you know, if possible, and I know this isn't always easy, especially if you're on your own, if you can get someone to read with you uh, as opposed to like taping the other part on your laptop, obviously, so much about acting is listening and reacting. So if it's if it's possible to 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 do that, um, that's really good. And I I would also say you know one one thing I know there's a lot of controversy about the whole issue of self taping now, but on the positive side, it is empowering I think for a, an actor to be able to like control what they send out. And I would really edit yourself well, meaning 
two good, uh, one great take is great and two is okay, but you don't need to send like five takes, you know, really, really uh, take this opportunity to be your own director, I guess is what I would say. An editor. An editor. <laughs> and cinematographer. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and also one other tiny thing is because some people don't have a camera, they're using their phone. I, I would suggest people if they're on their iPhone to remember to do it horizontally, um, which makes it easier and, and better in terms of how you project yourself. I'm curious how it is in Australia. Nikki, is it the, is it the same? Yeah, it's the same. And I, and I would say um, I agree with all of that. And what we always say to people is just make it as easy as possible for it to be seen and, and for us to see you as, as whatever the character is. And the other thing I, I sometimes worry about with um, self-text and, and in the room auditions is people think they have to be kind of do something really bold and interesting to get noticed. But I think what always gets you noticed is just doing a good performance and being true to it and, and keeping it simple. So yeah, this is same, same, really. Yeah. And get it in quickly. I mean, sometimes we, you know, you ask for a self-tape and two weeks later you're still ringing saying, is blah, blah, sending a tape? Like, you know, get it done, get it in. Right. Just out of curiosity, like, you know, when you are watching and, you know, we've had conversations in the past where, you know, you've said you watch every single, you know, audition that comes in. How much do you watch or like how, at what point do you know somebody could be right for the role? That is such a, I, I'm going to jump in, but, but that is such a great question. That's such a great, um, I, I, I feel that we listen to our guts, you know, there's, there's no, there's no real right, wrong uh, at, at all. And I, I don't know, that's when I was saying, maybe use your slate at the end of the, at the end of the taping, because I'm just eager to hear what you do. And, and so I, I look, I look at everything. Do I finish everything? Not always, not always, but I look at everything. Hi, Sarah. Yeah. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> Sorry, Hello, everyone. Sarah. Finn. I have a technical problem. I'm here. Hello. Hi. Hi. Welcome. We're uh, just talking about self-taping. Thank you. Yeah. I could hear a little bit of the start. I just missed a bit, but it's a uh, it's a great conversation, and I loved your comments, everybody. I agree. Keep it simple, and yeah, yeah. I have to agree with AV too about the gut thing. Um, it, it's um, I I don't I won't watch I won't watch a whole audition if I don't think they're right. You know, uh, um, and it's not just if they're not right; it's if they're not interesting. You know, because an actor could be right for something else. And maybe not right for the part they're reading. So, but there's got to be something that does sort of like make me go, oh, you know, like I always go, who's that? Like, or, hmm, you know, like, it's just like this thing that they do. And like I said, it might not be for that part. So that's why I might watch a little more, but there will come a time when I just won't have time to finish a, an audition if, I, if they're just not right for the role. I'll just have to move on. Because the thing that I, I think that the self-tapes has allowed us as casting directors is to see more people. Like we just see more actors because we have more time. No, you know, it's, they're crazy. It's, crazy. it's crazy how many more auditions I can watch and actors I can consider and yeah. the global thing also, mm. you yeah. know, that we're now working on such a global stage. So, you know, uh, then we have all those actors to consider too. So um, it's a, it's a lot, it's a lot more on our plate to do because when we, in the old days, you had allotted times for auditions and then that was it until the next day. But now you know, you could be watching you stay auditions up all, all day. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you're in bed with your laptop you going, oh, okay, let me just watch I one love, more. I love you, Call 2020 was the old days prior to the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do agree. It's, what's the word? It sort of democratized the process mm -hmm. so that, you know, normally in the course of casting, we, we'd bring in 12 or 15 people for a supporting part, people that we liked or looked interesting to us. And now a hundred auditions may come our way. Um, 
I, I do try, I mean, I do try to give everybody a fair shake, particularly people that we've requested the auditions for. Um, and, you know, as you said, sometimes it's not possible to, but I think it has opened the door uh, to a lot of discoveries that are out of the box that we may not have been aware of, you know, and, mm -hmm. and so I, you know, I, I've heard a lot of people um, disparage the self tape thing, which I understand, but I think in, in, in many respects, it's, it's just sort of opened a door. Um, for, for everybody. And it's also allowed actors to be wherever they are. Like everyone doesn't have to live in LA or live in you know New York or live in Sydney now. As an actor, you can live where you live and self-tape and send it. So it's kind of, it's kind of democratized that situation as well. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you guys all agree with this, but the other thing I think about tapes is that they don't have to be perfect. It's not about doing a perfect read because it, it's kind of like being in the room, if there's something interesting there, we will come back to you and we will say, can you retake, can you do this? So it's not about doing a perfect tape, it's about you know doing what you think, it's about offering something. Right. Sarah, what about you? The, the question was, you know, how much of the self tape do you watch before you know that somebody is right for a role or to girls point, like they could be right for something else, but not that specific one that you're currently casting. Yeah. I heard a little bit. I think I came in AV when you were answering this and, and certainly it's about instincts. Um, and as we go through the process, we learn more and more. We learn what the director's responding to. We learn more and more the qualities that we're really trying to identify. But I found with self tapes a lot. Um, I don't know how, how you all are finding it. It is, um, because the actor's working on their own, it's usually going to require another step. You know, it's not often that you're going to see a tape that's like, that's it. That's absolutely what we're looking for. Hopefully we get close enough so that we can get to the phase. And I think this is really returning now where callbacks are in person or screen tests are in person. So I think what, what I'm usually looking for, are we in the zone, right? Are we in the zone? And I, I always love it when actors put down a couple of different takes. Um, cause I think what you were saying, Nikki is like, there's, there's not one right way. There's never like one right way. And I think as an actor, if you're trying to game, what do they want to see or what's the right way to do this? You're on the wrong path. You know, it's really like, where are my instincts taking me? What do I, what do I connect with in this piece of material? And maybe there's, there's a more serious version and a more comedic, or maybe I'm going to, a lot of times we'll say, you know, let's do one that's strictly on the page and let's do one where you can throw in some of your own lines or whatever, just so, so we can get a sense because mm -hmm. there are a lot of advantages to the self tape. But I think what we miss is that, that personal sense of who you are as an actor. Mm -hmm. And that's what um, Gail, like you were saying, that's what's going to help us think of you for the next thing. If it's not this one. Mm -hmm. right. oh, yeah. That's absolutely. And one thing I'll add is, I mean, one of the things I really miss um, prior, prior to all of this was that I don't know how you guys work, but I always, I always read with actors. I didn't like to have a reader. Me in too. Yeah. So I like to be their scene partner. So I was not judging them. It was just me and my associate. And we work on the scene together, you know, and we get there. So that in a sense doesn't exist anymore. But I do find sometimes if I feel like the, the preliminary self tape is way off base or something, and I think there's something in the actor for the part, I'll reach out to them and mm -hmm. we'll either talk or through their agent and I'll give them some notes and have them tape again, you know, prior to that callback session. Um, but there's something also, I, I just want to add that I think directors like, in a sense, it's certain, some directors I work with like to give scenes cold to people just because they want to see what their instincts are with that preparation. And similarly with self tapes, I think in a way you're, you're gaining something to the psyche of the actor to just to see what on their own, they bring to something. They may not have been able to read the whole scripts. So they have to really analyze what these three pages are about. And um, I, I find a lot of the directors I work with uh, just find that process kind of captivating in a way. And they can just sort of look at it. And in a way, it's it's a it's a sort of Polaroid of who who the person is. And whether even if they're way off base in terms of what they're doing, you just learn something by watching them go for it. I actually had a director recently say that uh, he he doesn't he doesn't miss the in person because he's like even when the when the actor would come in in person he would still watch the monitor <laughs> 
So he was still looking at that frame, you know, because that's what you're going to be looking at. Right. So in a way the the actor is taking on a little bit of directing in that they're kind of putting themselves in a frame and seeing how their work is in that frame, which applies to film and television, you know, not theater so much, but film and TV for sure. Well, that's such a great point because, you know, you, you talked about working with directors and, you know, A.V., you cast Tar, which, you know, Todd Fields has said he wrote that for Kate Blanchett. He didn't write it with her in mind. There is a huge difference between the two. How do you cast around that where, you know, Lydia Tar is the story? And we mentioned it earlier, like Nina Hoss is, is incredible. She's not a discovery. She's a huge star in Germany, but, you know, finally Americans and... Western audience, you know, other audiences are catching up to that. How do you base, how do you work around that? Well, for for Tar, uh, music was the backdrop. And so my my job was, I found a a lot of musicians. Um, One in particular, the cello player, Todd really wanted the best cello. I mean, we did a world search for this Sophie, who was a cello player. Um, I remember one of the hardest, not the hardest, but um, she had never, she, film business was completely, you know, opposite of, of anything she had ever lived in her life. And the one, what was so important is when she went to Berlin for the first time, you know, no production has enough money to buy an extra seat for your cello, but she wouldn't have flown without an extra seat for her cello. So, you know, little things that we do to to help things happen, but um, music being the backdrop and Kate Blanchett and Todd, you know, we had to make sure everybody could keep up. You had to have the best of the best, hopefully, you know, it was also in the very, it was in the beginning of the pandemic, it was all crazy Zoom, crazy hours with everybody being in totally different continents. Um, we just kind of lived the film. And, 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 and it was such exquisite writing. I, I don't know if you all experienced this, but by the, when I saw the movie, I was like, I wanted to go back and read the script again. I felt like I just didn't get, you know, as much as I could have gotten. Um, but Nina was great. Every I just we're so proud of of everybody. Well, it's a, it's I'm curious too with with Elvis, Nikki. You know, we've heard about you know Baz Luhrmann has been has been very vocal about casting Austin, and you know that had to be correct. But how do you cast around that? You know, like Olivia is incredible as Priscilla, but it is you've got this incredible group of supporting characters too. Uh, yeah, well, again, it's it's the pandemic thing which sort of made, it, it kind of created hurdles, but it also really zeroed focus in a lot of ways. So at the beginning when we started casting before that had happened, it was all very external looking. We were talking about bringing people in, you know, and then, and then once the pandemic kind of shut the film down a week before it was supposed to shoot, and we had to recast a lot of stuff. It became very internally focused because, you know, no one could come into the country. And if they did, there was two weeks quarantine and suddenly within the country we had borders. So it kind of was narrowing down and down and down to, you know, we could, you know, we could take people from one city in Queensland um, and trying to recreate the American South from Queensland was challenging. Um, but it also was it was fa- kind of fantastic because it really pushed you out into looking in different spaces and and trying people and yeah it just happened despite everything really and Baz yeah. kind of combined you know working with a, a, a sort of ensemble of people that he worked with before like Richard Roxburgh and David Wenham and and then and then new people we really plowed through theater and, and all kinds of places just to find people to to fill those spaces. Yeah. Um, talk about, you know, I mean, you've all done this, but like, and this is really, it, it's a question for those who are just starting out, right? They could have like, you know, they might not have an agent or they 
they're not signed to CAA or WME. Like, how does that impact your casting process or does it not at all? Like, what is what is that step that those actors need to do? One thing that helps me if if I'm um if an actor doesn't have a, a representation but is lucky enough, you know, to maybe uh, get in a small theater production or something like an off-Broadway or off-off-Broadway. I mean, that's the great thing about New York is that there's so much content out there. (laughs) There's so much you can see and it, you know, it could be so many different venues, comedy and, um, you know, uh, off, off and off and whatever and ever and ever. But me seeing someone's work, is really the 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 best like better than an agent almost you know it's just like you can actually see someone perform live in on um in a play or 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 do stand up or do improv or do whatever they're doing you know that informs me so much that that's the for me that's the catalyst that's the first nugget like if i can see that and i will call someone based on work that i've seen them do so that doesn't require an agent doesn't require a manager you know it just it just requires the actor you know um pursuing the work you know and i think we all live in big enough cities so where we we all get to see that with with the talent that and where we live you know so that's just one way that i do it um I would add, I would add that I think we're living in a great age to be a young actor emerging. Um, Twenty years ago, we didn't have social media. Actors yeah. had to knock on the door of every agency and try to get discovered or do a scene night in a in a showcase somewhere. And um, a lot of young people, a lot of teenagers, are better versed in <laughs> taping themselves or pre- putting themselves out there in the world than any of us are. Um, and so I think that there are a lot of you know opportunities that exist today uh, for that you know uh, on YouTube, on you know on all kinds of platforms. Um, and I don't mean that you have to become like a, a TikTok star or something like that, but just that you have a way you have a way to put yourself out there um, if you haven't had a, a professional job yet. And, and I do monitor these things. And I, I, uh, some years ago, I worked on a Wes Anderson film, where we were looking for a young male lead. And the person we found was just somebody that I saw on a tape singing one day on YouTube. Um, and it led to like a crazy career trajectory for this person. Now that doesn't always happen, but it does happen, uh, uh, especially with younger people. So I think they're just there's, there's just an amazing opportunity to um, put yourself out in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Here's an interesting question that um, somebody has, has asked, you know, talking about the, you know, self-tape and having access to pretty much everybody from, you know, across, around the country. How do accents play into casting so you know like if they've got a slight accent but they don't look like their accents ethnicity so they're latina spanish or afro french like does that impact the casting process or like is that just here's what we're looking for in the role if we are looking for the best accent doesn't play into that at all We, we 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 generally just uh, you know p- people inquire about the accent every time we have a tape go out the, the the agent or the manager always says is there an accent so I, I've never really dealt with that I think the only time we really deal with that is when they must have an American accent or they must have a specific accent and then we just ask if they can and if they will yeah 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 Do I mean an have- actor can. Sorry, no, no I, I'm ahead. just saying, you know, they could certainly, um, you know, if they if they have an accent, I always like to hear a natural accent, you know, but but there are instances, of course, where the it's required by the script for it to be a certain way or, or not. Um, 
And a lot of times I'll say, well, let's just try it both ways so I can just hear it, you know, uh, not that I'm an expert on accents, but, you know, why not? You know, like, let's hear your natural accent. OK, now let's try it. Like if they're from England, let's try let's try an American, see what it sounds like, you know, and then we can sort of figure out if it actually works or not before we w- it would go to the next step of, of sending it to a director or something, you know, but, you know. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll listen to it. I'll listen to what you got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think for me, it just completely depends on the part. Sorry, Nikki. Yeah. If, you, you know, if it's open, if we're open, if we're kind of seeing, sometimes we're seeing male, female, non-binary, we're, we're, you know, we're sort of looking for a lot. The role can go a lot of different ways than anything goes. If it's written very specifically, then we're probably going to ask for that. And if it's an accent that, or a dialect that would require some training, we'd probably say, do it in your natural accent so we can see your instincts and, and then let us know where you're at with the accent. So we might know how much work it's going to take to get there. Right. Yeah. I want to come back to something Doug said. He said, TikTok. Um, I'm just curious, like, you know, the world has changed, but, you know, we went from in-person to Zoom, to self-tapes, to whatever hybrid this is now, and TikTok is suddenly the place. Do you have favorite places to look for, like, new emerging talents? I have to say, I don't really get TikTok. Like, I have a really hard time with TikTok. I know I'm supposed to be, like, um, but, I mean, I I do, I have found some, some interesting things on Instagram. Uh, you know, uh, because Instagram to me feels like you can search a something specific, you know, um, uh, with a word or something. I mean, maybe you can with TikTok too. I don't know. Uh, I just have to say, I'm I'm just not a TikTok person. Like, I, I'm I don't even know. Media person there is. So I, I couldn't even turn off my ringer. So uh, I'm not, <laughs> not in that world. And, and I, and I, and I hope it doesn't hurt. But the people around me know it. So that's the thing. Yeah, you have you have some people in your staff, hopefully, you know, that are uh, can figure it out. <laughs> can help and you I with it. I find directors say directors keep pointing me to people and they'll say, you know, I saw this person on YouTube or I saw this person on TikTok. Can you look can you look them up? Can you check them out? So they they sometimes come across people. And the other, the other time I find, because uh, I'm not very good at it either, but the other time I do find it useful is when we're looking for, uh, you know, looking for something specific like comedians, like musicians, and then you can kind of go into YouTube or whatever and do searches for really specific areas. I wouldn't generally just go looking for actors on TikTok or, or YouTube. It would be something specific. Like you have time to do that, right? <laughs> at four <laughs> o'clock in the morning, yes. That's what I do. It's five in the morning. Of course she does. Yeah, I'm TikToking. Again. <laughs> well, Sarah, I mean, to that, I mean, you cast Black Panther, Wakanda Forever and Everything Everywhere all at once. Both multiverse films, completely different multiverse films in that sense, too. Like, what is the difference? And I guess this goes to all of you in casting an indie film versus a film such as you know, Black Panther, which has, you know, which is a Marvel movie. Um, For me, really, the job is always the same. You're always in search of the best possible actor to Mm -hmm. to bring this role to life. Um, The difference, I think, in a bigger budget movie is you might have more time and you might have more resources. So we might be able to collaborate with, you know, Nikki, can you come on in Australia? And like, you know, we might be able to collaborate with a lot of different um, um, colleagues all over uh, and we might have more time and we might have bigger staff. But um, but the job is really still always the same. And I would say because this um, goes back to the other things that we've been talking about. Yes, if it's something really specific, you might want to do a search. Uh, but for me, I, I think theater is a, still a huge resource. And um, and I think that we can see sort of what an actor's training is and, and what they're made of. But um, to Doug's point too, theater doesn't have to be anymore on a stage. And there is true story, an actress we cast for the first Black Panther, who we saw do a monologue from Raisin in the Sun on her at her kitchen table that was on YouTube. 
So, you know, it was a piece that she really felt like she could, I can crush this. I'm going to do it. I'm going to put it out there. And she was cast off that. So, so theater, I love theater. And I, you know, like, I think as we all love movies, we want these to stay forever as a communal experience, but because of, because of the internet, because of these other avenues, there are ways for actors to showcase their work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's true. Are you still able to see through the nerves? Because sometimes you do get those tapes where somebody is nervous. And I think just going back to an earlier topic that we were talking about, like that gut, like they're right, but they're nervous. I'm going to call them again to do another tape. Like, how do you see through that? You know, you go. I was going to say, I think you see through it because it exists at every level. Um, I'll never forget very early, very early in my career, um, I was in a meeting session on an early project and a very famous older actress who's no longer with us, Colleen Dewhurst, walked in the room and her hands were shaking. And she just said, the nerves, they always get to you. And it, it, you, you can be an Academy Award winning actor. You can be a 12 year old starting out. I mean, human beings are human beings. I think you get that, you get, you see through that. If you see quality in someone and they, they goof up an audition or they're just, they're, they're having trouble. I mean, I think that, um, I think, I don't speak for you guys, but I just feel like you can see through that and everyone is rooting. I, I believe, no, main, actors may not believe this, but we're rooting for the actor to do well. We want them to do well. We wanna support them. Uh, in that process. So, so um, I, I think most casting professionals uh, are caring about that and just really want to um, help. It's funny because it's always about a, a nice room that you're in and now it's a metaphorical room, like a nice Zoom space. <laughs> well, be free. But it's a room too. I mean, it is a room too. So I, I would, I also feel like, don't you feel like the fact that that the actor is at home or wherever they are in their space, that some of some that has taken away some of the nerves so that what we see is not really the same as what we maybe used to see when they walked into the room. Well, you when, know, when they self tape. Yes. But on the zoom, I think if I there's think, a callback. Yeah. yeah. I mean, zoom is uncomfortable. I, I don't, I don't know. I wish I could always just take my face away and look at everybody else. It's, very distracting, um, you know. So when we're reading with actors, I, I try I, I try to take my face away a lot because um, it's distracting. Um, but I, I think yeah. their nerves are, are less when they're self taping, obviously. Yeah. But well, I, and also, it seems like you should always be a little bit nervous. I mean, <laughs> you know, I can't. I'm, I don't no, know. It's, how it's an energy. energy. Yeah. 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 yeah, it it feeds it kind of feeds it, you know. Yeah. So like you don't want to totally get rid of it because then it could just be very bland or come across as like there's really nothing going on, you know. Because they're, but so I yeah, it's an, it's an energy. You're right, like an electricity almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, uh, apropos of what you were saying, Gail, I do think in self taping when an actor is given a very demanding emotional scene that implies that they're going to be tearful. I think it's a relief for some actors to be able to, to work on that at home and present it. It's a lot harder mm -hmm. to do in a cubicle with three people facing you. Um, right. I, I think I think for anything that's really emotionally demanding that it, it, it can be an advantage. So I want to come back to the, the Black Panther actor. We're not going to ask for any names, but how did that actor um, who did the Raisin in the Sun monologue get their video seen by you? Um, it was on YouTube and actually I give Ryan Coogler props because he had heard about it. So that was another thing that I was going to say um, in terms of young actors. I think having a community is so important. Whatever your you know school you went to or theater group you're involved in or where you take your acting classes or if you're doing staged readings, P P actors share information and they're talking about it. And I'll have to find out from Ryan where he first um heard about it it's also an actress that was at a drama school so it was you know and a lot of us i know are kind of watching who's in the senior classes who's 
who's emerging, who's going to be graduating. A lot of times they have showcases. So there were probably a couple different ways. Um, but uh, I think that um, I think that the first step for an actor is just putting it out there, getting your work, getting work that you feel proud of, that you feel represents you, and then being able to put that out and then spread the word. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. Yeah. And there's some See? autonomy in that too. There's some sense of not being passive. Like you don't have to wait till someone asks you to be an actor. You can be an actor. You can create stuff. You can, it, you know, it's that thing of just being, uh, of, of taking some control, I guess. Of, so even if you don't have an audition for something, you can create something, you can put it out there and then maybe someone will find it. So you're, you're living as an actor, even when you're not actively auditioning. Mm. How do you all pick projects? I know a lot of you work with, you know, directors that, you know, you've worked with for a long time, but like what makes you say yes to the next projects that you choose? And often, and, you know, we can go on IMDb and like, you know, you've, you have like so many things going on at the same time. Like how do you be like, okay, I'm casting this and this and this, but this is why I said yes to, to send projects. Like if I start to feel excited, if I start to feel nervous, if I start to feel passionate, the way actors are feeling when they're coming in the room, if I start to like get a million ideas or I have an emotional connection, um, that's what, that's what usually tells me like, this is going to be exciting. This is a challenge. This is something right. I want to run, run towards. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's true. It, it does. It, it's, it's your instincts again. It's like what, you know, like I, I've, I've, um, you know, read something. I'm like, God, I don't know anything about this world. I don't even know how I can do this. Like, you know, it's all set in San Francisco in the 1960s. I don't know anything about San Francisco in the 1960s, you know. Um, but, you know, people, some people may go, oh, that's fine. You know, you could still cast it. Of course you could. But I think there is there. It's timing, just like with actors, too. Like sometimes you just or you can't take on another project or you or you have the availability and you're like, yeah, I got to work, you know? <laughs> so, and then relationships, because we tend to work with a lot of the same people, uh, the same, you know, uh, people, you know, use this again, again, which is great because, you know, it, you, you create like this, you know, it's like with Doug working with um, West, you know, like you, you probably build up this like shorthand, Right. That you can the way that you guys work with each other because you know each other so well. Yeah. It's a delight to to work with um it's a delight to work with nice people. Yeah. It just makes your life so much easier. And then you're, you know, I'll I'll work 24 hours and feel fine if I'm working with people that you know, we're all doing it together. Um and that changes the experience for me a lot it's it's just i love working you know then you love with everything you're doing and you're excited about casting everybody and you're excited about the research you know it's it's there was one thing you know there was there was like certain things that i was wondering for a while i kept getting uh scripts that have to deal with certain emotional and and i was and i felt like those scripts were coming to me because I got to work this out or something crazy like that. Um, I'm always, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm always curious what comes to me, you know, like, you know, because there's so many, you know, a lot of talented casting people. I, I want to add to what everyone's saying. First of all, you said, what do you pick? Well, first they got to ask you, <laughs> right. Um, but I, I agree with what Avi said that, uh, you have to love the people. Um, you have to work with a producer that you can deal with because it's not, you know, there are some wonderful people and there's some, you know, maybe challenging. But for me, I had this other function in, in the arts world as, a, as an artistic director of a theater company. So in that capacity, I have to make a lot of decisions and tell people what to do. And one of the things, joys of working in film casting is the role is a little bit reversed in terms of I'm there working for a director. And one thing that I've always loved, because I've worked with kind of a small coterie of directors, is there's this precious period 
that we all have with the director before everyone else is pecking at them. And if it's a good relationship for two or three months, you become, not always, but sometimes you become very close and you're their confidant. You're the person they lean on when maybe they have to fight the good fight about their script or choices with you know, the powers that be. And it's, it can be a, re- it's a really interesting relationship that, that kind of exists a little bit in a bubble before kind of all hell breaks loose and then you have no <laughs> access to them. So it's a, so it is very much about that. And, and to echo what you're saying, AP, like the longest while I felt like I was always getting called when people needed a really hard child, a, a child search <laughs> that was really challenging. I'm like, oh, what, that's is, me. what are you coming to me for that? Although I enjoy it, but um um, I think I worked on four projects in the pandemic where I was searching for 12 year olds. And, uh, it, it, you know, it, 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 it's just funny that in a way we get typecast. Um, <laughs> it's true. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, I love that. And I mean, is there, is there somebody, you know, you're talking about like fighting, you know, s- fighting for somebody that you believe in or like a director, you know, believes in and then the producer's like, I don't know. Like, is there a casting story that you want to share that you're like, okay, we went on this journey with this actor. You don't have to say the name. If you want to, you can. But like, you're like, I'm so proud of this to this day in my career. This is like a top five highlight. Um. Oh, Scared. I can't. No, I'll go. I'll go. This one's easy. This one's easy. I'm not going to, I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus. No, I work with a lovely cast uh, director, Kelly Reichart, and she makes very little movies, but they're so great because they're little, you know, <laughs> like I don't have to deal with a lot of people. It's very nice. But we were working on a movie and um, it, there was an Asian character who was one of the leads of the film. Uh, a male Asian and um, we did a search all over you know China and Australia and like we really did England you know we did a big search the first actor that auditioned the very first actor that auditioned was the person that got the role the very very first the very first one later and you decided two years later I'm sure (laughs) <laughs> right. You know, and you just go through, but you still have to just go through the whole thing, you know, and you're seeing hundreds and hundreds of people and, you know, um, but that's, you know, that's, that's what happens sometimes. I mean, I don't know if that's the right story you're looking for, but it just felt like to me, that's sometimes it's, a, a, you know, the a, antithesis of our job, right? You know, it's like, you really, you can find the right person right away, but you still kind of have to go through it for, you know, for everyone else, you know, and for the director too, if they're not sure, of course. But um, I just thought that was that it wasn't so that much that it was painful, but it, it was a little painful. <laughs> I reckon that's a weirdly common story. I, I didn't cast Muriel's Wedding. My aunt uh, cast Muriel's Wedding, but I think Tony Collette was literally the first person they saw on the first day. I know when I was doing Somersault, Abby Cornish was the first person we tested on the first day. And then then you go and look at all these other people, but it's really weird how often that first day contains something. And maybe yeah. because, they, you know, they're the people you bring in because that's your instinct. And maybe on some days it's the hundredth day, but it's weird how often it is early. Right. I think we all have the dreadful stories as well, the gossipy stories that don't, <laughs> don't aren't suitable, but... We have our casting stories, I'm sure. I know. Yes. I, yeah. <laughs> um, I want to touch on Doug's point about casting children, right? Because the casting process is not like we're not, you're not going to cast a 12 year old in seven days. Like it takes months. How do you even like, you can't tell if a 12 year old is going to have a growth spurt or you know, puberty hits, like, how do you even navigate that? I'm just curious because you brought that up and it was like, oh my gosh, like, how do you deal with that as casting directors? I'll say one thing about kids is when I first started casting the first many years were just kids, but that's when you could go to schools and I would just look in a window and I would go, oh, that person, can you give that person's mother this letter? But now 
And then I remember doing it on the subway. And now, you know, you'll get arrested. Um, you know, so now the kid search is like completely different. But I think we're all seasoned enough to know if you're going to cast a 12 or 13 year old boy, you know, uh, as a voice, you know, we, we know if something's going to change or a girl hitting puberty or, or, or any of that. But you can't control it. But you try to I don't know. I always I, I want to cast it as quickly to shooting period as possible because they do change. They do change and their personality changes. Um, I have to throw in, A.B. may not remember this apropos of what you just said, but many years ago I was casting kids and my assistant watched like a sports event at a school and handed a slip to the kid. And A.B. Coffin called me because it's her son and said, do you remember this? Um, like, what are you doing? He's not an actor. Wait, I have to tell you one funny story though, because I did this open call and and the and the child was supposed to actually get into a bathtub with a with a with a famous actor. And uh and so we had this big open call and my kids were very young and they came to see me in the open call. And the director, I could see that he was just like not liking anybody, and I could feel the patience. And then all of a sudden he goes, That's it. And I did the same thing. I, I, I said, oh, no, 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 that's my son. And and he, the director got a little upset with me going, well, you should speak to him. Maybe he wants to act, you know. Anyway, Doug, that was hysterical. But, but it is, there's a sort of happy accident, I think, with kid casting. Like, you never know. Um, yeah. I, I, um, I mean, we all have these stories. I, I was casting a movie called Signs years ago, like Shyamalan, and one of the leads was a five-year-old girl. And we just weren't finding, and it was a really hard part. And a boy, a teenage boy read for us and his mother was outside in the room and his little five-year-old sister was asleep on the mother's shoulder. And I remember, I just said to the mom, does, does she want to try out? And she's like, oh no, she's not an actor. And the little girl said, I want to try out. It was a five-year-old Abigail Breslin and she got the part. And um, I knew she was going to be great because I, I remember like when she came in, it was an emotional scene in the callback and and I was trying to be very sensitive with her. And she just looked at me and she said, did you mean to cry? Um, what page? <laughs> I thought, okay, this is a natural, you know, uh, someone who wants to be in the room, you know, but but that stuff does happen. I mean, so and, yeah, that's people, happened twice. I love those stories. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And I would say in line with what Avi was saying, young people casting has changed because you can't really go into schools anymore, but it has also opened up. I, I just worked on this movie, White Noise, and we had to look for kids and the high school kids were much more open, like very easy for all of them to self tape when they heard about it, like, because they all want people wanted in. So we, we got deluged with, with, uh, a lot of self submissions uh, uh, from non non professional non represented teenage kids. So it just it 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 made for a very plentiful field to sort of look. It at. is where social media. I'm finding I don't know if you guys it really helps. Like social media with kids is really great. We could post on Facebook and notice and sudden and you know everybody kind of piles up. It's much easier than in the old days where you placed ads in newspapers and did radio announcements. Now you just put a post on Facebook and 5,000 parents. Right. Come back to you. That, yeah, that is good. That's good. Yeah. <clears throat> well, on the opposite end of the spectrum, you know, we have actors, some, some of them are older who take a break and want to return to acting after taking a hiatus for whatever reason. What advice would you give to those actors who want to start up again? Well, or I will that... say Sarah should actually address this because I think Sarah, didn't you, there you go. I mean, that's a, you, the opportunity, there you go. I, I think you mean with key, key Kwan and, and everything everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. yeah. An incredible story, an incredible story. And, and I think what, what I would say is if you're coming back into it, you know, he was willing to audition and, and he hadn't auditioned in a long time. And he just thought, I'm going to, after seeing Crazy Rich Asians, and maybe I don't want to repeat the whole story, um, but if people don't know, he thought maybe there really are parts that are meaningful, that are good, that I that, that are three-dimensional and 
and that I might want to play. Um, but he he didn't sort of rest on his laurels or expect people to know who he was or expect to get offered the part. Um, he came in and and really fought for it and and did incredible work and incredible auditions. Uh, so I think that that's a good starting place is if you're coming back into it again, find your support, find a coach that you like or people you want to work with so that you can get your muscle strong again, so that you can start doing scenes and practicing your auditions and get comfortable getting back into a room. And, um, and I also think if you're willing to do small parts, I don't know about you guys, but just finding a super solid actor to be a co-star for scale is often hard. You know? Very hard. Uh, you yeah. know what? And I and I think uh, you nailed it because auditions and because a lot of you know forget your past, go for it again and auditions and take small parts and go for it. Yep. If there's something you want, um, of course, it's on my mind because uh, James Hong, if you guys saw the SAG Awards, uh, gave such an incredible speech. Um, but uh, he auditioned at 91 years old. He wanted the part. I said, no, no, we've got really good tape. I don't, you know, I don't think you have to. He's like, no, I want to, I want to audition. I want this part. And uh, so I think that that attitude of, I want to show my work. I want to show my passion goes a really long way. Yeah. It's a muscle, you know, acting and, you know, that that's a muscle that you should use, you know, so it does make a lot of sense to, to, if you're going to get back in it, just like if you're going to, you know, work out, lose weight, you got to do the work, you know, you got to like move the muscles, you got to, you know, do it. Yep. I agree. Shake it up, people. Right. <laughs> like Nike says, right? <laughs> what a joy to be with all these casting people and Jazz, you, you're, you've made everything so uh, nice for us. I want to, I want to shout out to my, my uh, assistant Paulette, who I think is in the audience, Paulette. That's all in I want to say. Or, <laughs> or she told me she was going to sign in. Yeah. So let's say hi to Paulette. <laughs> yeah. It's I wanted nice to see all you East Coasters too and, and far away. Yeah. Yes. You too. Yes. Yeah. It's so nice to, to get to meet Nikki and Sarah. I don't know you guys. I, you know, we've never met. So it's cool. Yeah. Incredible. That was such a great conversation. So, no, thank you all for sharing insight into your process and casting and giving away all your secrets and sharing these incredible stories. Thank you to everybody for tuning into and sending in your, your questions. And the conversation is recorded and is going to be posted on the SAG after a YouTube channel. And that was so wonderful. And thank you again. And check out the uh, program's calendar, which is in the chat and yeah, appreciate you all and congratulations on your incredible casting work that you Thank do you and all. continue. Thank you, all. Thank you, Jazz. Bye. Thank you so Bye. much, everybody. Bye. Yes.